Today, Gato scripts, scenes, and nodes right in the Trench Broom editor. You can watch the previous video to get help connecting Trench Broom and the Gato engine. Otherwise, let's jump into it. We're starting from the last video. This is assuming you've got Trench Broom and the Gato engine. Once you have everything connected, you have three different entity classes that you can use with Trench Broom. I'm gonna to head to my assets folder in scripts, and then we're gonna create a new folder environment, and then we'll create a new script. Now I've gone ahead and created a moving platform script. This is not really the focus of this tutorial, but it's gonna help illustrate what we're talking about. The first thing that we need to add is the tool line. Adding that tool line means the script is actually running in the editor, not just in the game. And we need it to run in the editor because when we build our map, Funkato is going to run this script and then it's gonna tell it what it needs to do with all this information. Have a class name for moving platform, extending animatable body, a few export variables to decide how far we want to move our platform, how long we want it to take, and what direction we want it to move. And then we just have a couple of variables so that we have access to our start position, end position, and then we're saving our tween. Before I jump into this function here, let's just look at the moving part of this. Whenever we ready our script, we check if we're not in the editor, we're actually in the game, and then we set our start position to our global position, and then calculate the end position by using the start position plus the direction we're moving and our moving distance. And our start movement function is just gonna tween the position of this platform. Now let's jump back up to our funk gato apply properties function. This is a function that's gonna be run by the funk gato add-on. Whenever this funk gato add-on runs, we're gonna get a set of entity properties. These are gonna be properties that we set when we create an FGD resource. This is the part that runs whenever we import our trench broom map. And all it does is it gets our move distance class parameter that we're going to create and set our move distance within our script. Basically, we're taking the information that we're inputting into Trench Broom and moving it into our Gato object. Now that we have a background of what all of this means, let's create that FGD resource. So we're gonna to go to our solid folder, right click, create new, create new resource, and we're gonna look for our FGD files. You'll notice four different classes that we can use, a point class, a model point class, and our solid class. For our moving platform, we want to use a solid class because what that does is it takes geometry within Trench Broom. We could right click that and create a brush entity. And right now we have some built-in ones that come with the, the add-on, but we're gonna be making our own. We're gonna add a Funk Gato FGD solid class. We'll save that as a Funk moving platform. And then we're gonna open that up. Then in the inspector, you have a bunch of different options for your solid class. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, like your GI mode and whether you wanna use shadows. There are some instances where you will not want to use build visuals. The build visuals option is what makes the mesh instance 3D node. For a moving platform, we want that to be on. In the collision build, if you want to specify a collision layer or a mask, which you might do with say a, a trigger or something like that. You can do that there. You also need to go to entity definition and set a class name. Here we can do function and moving platform. Whatever you use before this underscore is how this is gonna get categorized in these create brush entity options. So if you name this something like movement, it's gonna create a new uh, list there. You can add a description. This is gonna be a moving platform. Then let's jump down here to the node generation. The node class is the type of node that this is going to be. Now, we've already decided what that's going to be, and that's an animatable body 3D node. So whenever this gets imported, that's the node it's going to use. And then we need to go to class properties. Class properties are what's going to show up whenever you select an entity and have all of these key names and then the values. This is what allows us to set up different settings from within Trench Broom. Your key is gonna be a string, and in this case, we're gonna have one for our move distance, and that move distance is going to be a float, and then you add key value pair, and then you can keep adding some more. So the next one would be move time. It will also be a float. You can set these to default values, if you would like. We're just gonna keep them at zero. And then finally, a move direction. And then this will be a vector three. Now, once you have all of that set up, we need to add this to the FGD file resource that we created in the last episode. 
go to Entity Definitions, and this is where you can add your own classes. So we're just going to take our Funk Moving Platform Resource, drag it on over. Once you have that loaded, you can click the Export FGD button. This is going to update the FGD file that is being used within Trench Broom. You can click that, you'll see that in your output. Go back to Trench Broom and hit F6. This is going to update your entity definition file. Now, if you've done everything right, you should be able to click on any brush and then right click, go to Create Brush Entity, Funk, and then see the new Moving Platform class. If you add it, you'll get a title for that class entity. And then up in the Entity tab, You'll notice your class name, move direction, move distance, and move time. We can set our move distance to something like two. The move direction will be up. I will say there's one thing that you need to think about, and we're not super worried about this in this episode, but the axis setup within Trench Broom is not the same as the Gato Engine. If you're looking in Trench Broom and thinking, oh, Z is up, well, it is up in Trench Broom, but it's not up in the Gato Engine. So, you have to remember that you're thinking in terms of the Gato engine. What you would end up doing is if you're thinking in terms of trench broom, you would just convert these axes to match what the Gato engine would be. So Z would become Y and I believe it's Y becomes X and X becomes Z. But as you get deeper into this, just know you need to think about that. Finally, we'll set our move time to two and we'll save our map. We go back to our map, our Funk Gato map node, and then we build our map. You'll notice that we now have a entity funk moving platform node that got imported. And this is an animatable body 3D and it has our script. You'll also notice if you click on that node and go to the inspector tab, our move distance, time and direction have already been set. Again, this is because this is a tool script that gets run when we import and it runs this function. So we're taking our key values from Trench Broom and then applying them to our export variables within the Gato engine. Now you can press play and you'll actually see the platform moving up and down just like we scripted. And just to show you how easy it is now to add a moving platform, let's go back to Trench Broom and we'll create a new brush. Let's say this is a flat one that we can actually ride right there. Then you right click that entity, create brush entity, and then moving platform. And then we can set all of our settings. Let's have it go along the X axis this time. And we'll set a move distance of five and a move time of four seconds. We'll save that, go back to the Gato engine and import our map again. There's our new node. We can press play and there it is. Pretty cool. Again, this makes it super, super quick to iterate on new objects or, or new things within your levels. It's just a lot easier to add and work in Trench Broom, I think. The next class that we're gonna work on is a simple point class. So unlike the solid class, which uses the entire brush, the point class is just a point on the map. We're gonna use this to add a light. And this light class is gonna allow us to just add lights within Trench Broom. We'll go to our FGD point folder and then create another resource. And this will be a point class resource. We'll call this Funk Light. We'll double click that and you'll see that we have different options. Now, instead of a node, you can actually use a scene. Maybe you have a light scene that you'd like to use that doesn't just have a light node, but, but other things like maybe a sound. Then you can pop in that scene file and it will load that instead of just the node. You also have the ability to add your script, but in our case, we're just gonna do our entity definition. We'll call this Funk Light, and our description adds a light, and then some class properties. Now, if you want to set up a script or import, say, the color or the range or the energy, you can do that within your class properties. We've already done that, so I'm gonna skip ahead to the node generation. For this, we're gonna use an OmniLight 3D node, and that's all you need to do in order to get the node to load. Go back to Trench Broom, hit F6, and you should see a new entity pop up in your entity browser. Now we're just doing a light, so it's, it's not as cool as it could be, but all you have to do is take that, drag it into your level, and just put that light wherever you want. You can easily duplicate it, create a bunch of different lights. Once we save that, go back to our game, and then rebuild our map. We have our lights. Finally, we have something that's very similar to the point class, 
and that's the model point class. This is also going to be within the entity browser, except we can actually get the model that we're using in the Gato engine and have it show up within trench broom. Now, if you had a ammo kit or an armor kit and you wanted that to show up, have the model show up, this would be what you would use. So in our case, we're going to create a new scene and we're going to pretend we're creating a lamp scene. We'll create a node 3D, set up our lamp post, and then at the top of the lamp post, we'll add another light. And just to make this a little bit different, let's make this yellow, maybe a little bit of an orange. Bump up the energy, make it a little bit bigger and we'll add our shadow. Now we've got our scene and now we need to create our new model point class. Go back to our FGD folder, right click, create a new resource, this time model point class. You'll notice it's a subclass of the, the point class. Open that up and we do have some different things that we need to set up. The first thing is the target map editor. Now what's going to happen here is it's going to take whatever is in our scene geometry wise and it's going to create a new GLB file that's going to get used by trench broom. We don't really need to worry about how that all works. We just need to make sure that we have the right map editor and we need to set up a models subfolder because that's where it's going to export to. Now, instead of setting our models subfolder every single time we make a new class, you can go to your project settings and then look for your funk gato option and then the model point class save path. For me, it's within the trench broom and then models folder. You set it here. You don't have to set it anywhere else. If you want to change it, you can here. Otherwise, it's just going to take the default. We'll turn generate size property on and then load your scene file within the scene. Scripting, you can add, but you don't need to worry about it. In fact, if you're using a scene, you probably are adding a script anyway. Add your entity definition class name description. It's a lamppost. And because we're using a scene, we don't need to add a node class. Then we can take that, add it into our FGD file export that. When you do that, a little window is going to flash and you'll notice that the models folder just had a light lamppost GLB file added. Back in Trench Broom, hit F6. And if you've done everything correctly, you should have your light lamppost pop up in your entity browser, which means we can now take that, drag it, and then add it to our level and actually see the geometry of our scene, which is pretty cool. You will notice that I don't have a diffuse texture for my material. Now, if you get an error about your texture and you want that texture to show up, I just didn't set a texture. So you can actually go back, go to our mesh instance. We'll create a new material and let's just set one of our trench broom textures to our albedo. We'll use our dirt texture, which makes no sense, but we'll save it. And then whenever you do any changes to this, you need to go back to your FGD file and do another export so that it reruns that process for the model GLB. When you do that and you have a texture, that texture is also going to pop up in your models folder. Go back to Trench Broom. We'll hit F6. And you should get a texture now on that entity. Now we can save, rebuild our map, which should have it show up. There it is. And we also have our light. And we can run and see all of our wonderful entities working together in harmony. So that's the three different entity types that you can use with Trench Broom and the Gato Engine. And this is just really super basic. You can do some really interesting and cool things and really complex things. And because you're using the Gato engine to script everything and build it, it's pretty endless in what you can do. The source files for this episode are available to stay at home dev community members via my full Gato engine FPS development kit. This kit contains every FPS mechanic that we cover in these videos. Becoming a member is what makes these videos possible. I really do appreciate it. And you can also get the free starter kit if you're starting from complete scratch. If this helped, like the video, subscribe for more Gato content, check out my website for the source files, and as always, keep creating.